throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be. Of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. The Lioness, a beautiful and powerful creature who can be nurturing and protective of her family, yet also fierce beyond compare when faced with an enemy. So it comes as no surprise that the Egyptian goddess of war, the protector of the pharaohs, is depicted as a lioness, ready to battle those who would threaten her keep. Sekhmet, or Sakmis, is the goddess of war and destruction, and is associated with violence, chaos, plagues, yet also justice and healing. In art, she is frequently depicted as an athletically built woman with the head of a lioness, or in the form of a particularly large lioness. Her head was crowned with a large solar disk relating her to the sun god Ra, her father, and a Urias, the serpent associated with Egyptian kingship. She is the wife of Ta, an Egyptian creator god, who conceived the world and brought it into being through the creative power of speech. Together they had a son, Nefertem, and in some traditions, an additional son in the form of Mahes. With her short temper and quick-to-kill nature, Sekhmet was a terrifying goddess. Yet for her loyal followers, she could avert plague and cure disease and became known as the patron of physicians and healers. An interesting dichotomy, a violent war god who is also a protective healer. But this may be because, above all else, Sekhmet is sworn to uphold Mot, the ancient Egyptian concept of balance, order, morality, and justice. Sekhmet's most famous story concerns the manner of her birth and her attempt to slaughter the whole of mankind. As the tale goes, in the early days of humanity, when Ra's reign as pharaoh was reaching its end, humanity began to lose respect for their sovereign. They no longer feared him or obeyed his laws and began to indulge in lawlessness and unscrupulous behavior. Angered at this defiance and the evils wrought from it, Ra sought to punish the mortals who conspired against him. So at the terrible glance from the eye of Ra, he sent Hathor in the form of a lioness. And from this form, his daughter Sekhmet came into being, the fiercest of all goddesses. Like a hungry lion, she rushed upon her prey and her chief delight was in slaughter, and her pleasure was in blood. At the bidding of Ra, she went down into Upper and Lower Egypt to slay those who had scorned and disobeyed him. She killed them among the mountains which lie on either side of the Nile, and down beside the river, and in the burning deserts. Sekhmet fought without mercy and destroyed the rebels easily rending their bodies asunder, and drinking their blood as if it were wine. However, Sekhmet grew blood drunk, and turned her wrath upon Ra's followers. All whom she saw, she slew, rejoicing in slaughter and the taste of blood. Not even the innocent were spared from the carnage of the lioness. Presently, Ra looked out over the earth once more, and now his heart was stirred with pity for men, even though they had rebelled against him. But none could stop the cruel goddess Sekhmet, not even Ra himself. She must cease from slaying of her own accord, and Ra saw that this could only come through cunning. 
Ra and the other gods laid out 7,000 jars of barley beer and mixed them with red ochre and pomegranate juice, turning the drink a deep red color. Believing the beer to be human blood, Sekhmet gorged herself, drinking the last drop from every single jar. In no time at all, the effects of the alcohol reached her brain, slowing her reflexes, making her docile, and putting her to sleep. When she awoke days later, her bloodlust had dissipated, and mankind was saved from bloody ruin. To circumvent this from ever happening again, Egyptian priests developed an elaborate ritual revolving around hundreds of statues of the goddess each morning and each afternoon of every day. And only by the strictest adherence to this never-ending ritual could the ancient Egyptians be assured of their ability to placate Sekhmet. Like real-life lions, Sekhmet was both greatly feared and greatly honored. During her annual festival, held at the beginning of the year, Egyptians would dance, play music, and intoxicate themselves on red-dyed beer and wine in an attempt to soothe the wrath of the goddess. She was adopted by many Egyptian pharaohs as a military patroness, for she was said to breathe fire against the enemies of Egypt. Banners and flags would march into battle with depictions of Sekhmet, symbolizing the might of the pharaoh in war. During military campaigns, the hot desert winds were considered to be the hot breath of Sekhmet herself. And after each battle, celebrations would be held in honor of the goddess, so she could be appeased and not continue with her destruction. The lioness goddess Sekhmet, defender of Egypt and of Mat, and the almost destroyer of mankind, whose name invokes strength and power, brings a new meaning to the phrase, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. <laughs>